Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Pharaoh with Cleopatra Expansion. Pharaoh is a city building game that was made in 1999 and falls into the same category of games like Caesar Free or Zeus. But Zeus takes place in Greece, Caesar in Rome, obviously, and Pharaoh in ancient Egypt. And so far this one is my favorite from the series or saga or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> because something about this game is just magnificent every time you play it or at least every time I play it I feel the summer coming out of it and you know building pyramids and stuff in the beginning you start by managing humble settlements and learning how water distribution works hunting works later on how farms work but in the end eventually you get to places like building the great pyramids of Giza or building a sphinx and that's when this game really becomes challenging so I hope you would like to join me in this endeavor and last thing I have to mention before I start I was able uh, to change the resolution of this game to high the real high definition. However, the game was not designed for this. So while the main core of the game, the play screen, actually works, you can see that this part is not working properly. There are black squares and the original picture is not stretched. So I apologize for that. I know about this problem, but there's no way it can be fixed. So please find it in yourself to tolerate this and without further ado, we're gonna go. And you start by creating your own dynasty. There's no dynasty yet existing in the game, uh, because I did not play it on this computer yet. So let's... I'm tempted to create a Ptolemy dynasty, but let's create some fictional one. Mm, hot and thought. That sounds Egyptian, right? And here we are at Hot and Thought family screen. We can either begin a family screen, choose a mission, custom mission, or return to family registry. But we're gonna begin a family history. Now, uh, we have jumped to uh, the screen which lets you choose the period in which you will play. As you can see, there's a pre dynastic period. Archaic period, Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and New Kingdom, and then there's Cleopatra, Valley of the Kings, Ramses II, Ancient Conquerors, and Cleopatra's capital. So we'll start with the pre-dynastic period. Your family begins the pre-dynastic period leading a small band of nomads through their discovery of the arts of civilization. Your leadership helps to set Egypt on its course to eventually Grand to eventual greatness still glimpsed only dimly. So let's start. It is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So may the story of a great nation begin with one dream. The Red Land has given birth to such a dream. Clans of nomads carry it in their heart, across the immeasurable desert, and into the land of Egypt. Welcome to ancient Egypt, land of the pharaohs. Here you'll participate in the history of one of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen in an epic story that spans more than 15 centuries and two dozen generations. You must lead one family, generation by generation, from its earliest beginnings in Egyptian prehistory, through the dawn of civilization, to the establishment of a unique and powerful empire and beyond. Our story begins more than 5,000 years ago, along the banks of the Nile River in an area known as Nupt. Here, a small confederacy of clans struggles to eke out an existence in the harsh environment. 
With you at its head, your family leaves this small settlement. So, one thing that I really like about Pharaoh is its incredible historical accuracy and the way it deals with the different quests. It actually never gets boring to me. So, this is a very simple mission, sort of a tutorial mission. I like the way they handle the tutorial as well as you continue continuously play and they present you with new things in each mission eventually coming to a point where there's nothing new to do except for more challenging tasks so we're gonna start and I'm gonna put the difficulty up to hard because normal is quite easy actually but uh, mind you that these are well there might be points where we're gonna jump down with the difficulty because it becomes ridiculous at certain points where you more race with the time than with the game so but I'll, but I'll inform you of such changes if any of those occur so let's go to the city housing and roads now I'm gonna try to explain everything as uh, best as I can Let's pause the game and I'll show you a couple of things. This is the main road, obviously. These are the flat points. We won't be using those now. This is an oasis. These are ostriches. Ostriches can be hunted for food, as flat points can be used for farming. But we won't be doing any farming in the first mission. These are reed fields. Uh, we can harvest reeds here, but not now again. The game works with a system that is used in other games of this type as well and that is uh, housings. Housings have different levels depending on what kind of services they well how would I put this receive. I'm gonna demonstrate this demonstrate this by actually showing you how this work in uh, in the game. We're gonna start um, oh, I can when the game is paused. We're gonna start a normal settlement here near the riverbanks, and we're gonna place in housing tiles. Now, e now each of these tile, each of these tiles can be uh, settled by immigrants. I'm new here. I wonder what the city will offer to a person like me. These are immigrants. They come to your city in seek of wealth, fortune, jobs, and other stuff. Now, you will see that they will create small houses around here. I might actually speed the game up a bit. Come on, go. Okay, so here you can see that they created what's called a crude hut. The house cannot evolve as it does not have access to even the most primitive water source. So this is the very first building you will receive every time an immigrant comes. Now, by placing wells in the vicinity of these houses, we can actually make them evolve. See, this is now a sturdy hut, and this house cannot evolve as it needs a supply of food. I think it's without saying that you need as best as possible houses, because the more houses, the more people they can hold in. Crude hut can only um, house 20 people, while sturdy hut can house 28. Bigger and better house types will emerge as we get access to more types of houses. If you paid attention, the task of this game, uh, of this particular mission, is to get a certain type of houses. Six major shanties, yes. So for that we will need more houses. Come on. Evolve. 
And evolve, evolve, evolve. Housing and roads. Yes. We actually have... No, we don't. Okay. We need to uh, get more people so that we can get more advanced buildings. Like actually the food chain for this mission. Come on. I apologize that, that the start might be a bit slow. But it's important for you guys to understand what I'm doing and how this thing works because in other missions I don't want to, you know, try to explain this over and over again as the basic thing stays always the same. The more services you provide to your people, the better houses they will have, the more money in taxes they will pay you, the more people they will house, the more services they can give you again. Now, we have gained an access to another uh, part of the service chain which is the ver the very basic service chain which is food as you can see it shows here you can build hunters which will go and hunt ostriches then they will um, these movers will move meat from hunters to a granary from granary they will move it to a bazaar and bazaar will distribute the food in between the people so we can actually start doing that now let's build a granary here uh it's a way of habit actually uh it's not a good idea to build a granary next to your uh, houses because it reduces desirability of the place but as this is a very basic mission we're not having a problem let's build two hunting lodges that will hunt see these guys the most popular person in the city a lot of people need jobs. They will work or um, move around searching for employees for the hunting lodge. They will find them very easily because everybody is not employed here. And once they find them, they will employ them in uh, the respective buildings. And you can see here we got 100 units of game meat, which they already hunted. So, here's the bazaar. And you'll see that once we uh, distribute some food in between the people, we will get more, well, not more, but better building types. Actually, more building types. And there's the fire. Fire is not your friend. Every, uh, actually, does it let me show you? Let's build a firehouse here. Again. Everything in the game needs employees. You will reach a point in the game where you have too many buildings and too little employees, which is where the problem starts. Come on. Yeah, and we already have a firefighter. You can see him here. With this city. The good thing is that they always tell you their opinions about uh, the city. So you can check with your people if everything is okay for them. We're going to build one more firehouse here and one more here to make sure that these don't burn down and very important thing uh, wells are nice but they are actually not the desirable oh. okay I had a small crash there which is a great way how to start recording anyways what I was saying is that wells are not the best way how to distribute water there's actually something called a water supply is it, it's, yeah water supply which works the same way as any other building while wells provide water to only their immediate neighbors water supply finds five employees that will actually carry the water around come on carry the water around I'm waiting for you oh and by the way here you can see carrying water is not entertainment I wish we had some real diversions here. Okay, so now I clicked add the carrier, but what I wanted to click was the These lady, goods will make welcome additions to the bazaar. Which is carrying, you can see that in these, uh, these Maybe the I just carry baskets now, but one day I'll run the bazaar. <laughs> they, car they help her carry the food, so she's actually carrying like 100, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, 800, um units of game meat. No, 700. I was mistaken. 
Okay, and here you can see that he actually distributes water as he walks around the city. The buildings are changing because they now have green water access. Let's build another one here. Oh, and here. I do my best to give the people what they want. This lady distributes food. And so she did. We have a major shanty here now. And they will evolve a bit more once these really poor crude huts get access to water. Uh, there are orval overlays that actually show you uh, the different access, um, access types and for example this is the risk of fire. As we have firemen going around there is no risk of fire. Um, some interesting ones for us now. Food? Oh I doesn't show food. Oh she got more now. Come on, make them a wall. And we have won. So this was the mission one. It was kind of fast, wasn't it? Uh, it just teaches you the really very basic stuff about running the city. This is the distribution system is how the game is run. Uh, and you have to understand that. If you don't, then you have a problem. As the game will, uh, well, not fuck you up, but you will have problem running your city effectively. So, this was the first mission. I hope you enjoyed.